Tractate Rosh Hashanah General Introduction. The festival of Rosh Hashanah, which falls on the first of the month of Tishrei, is the first day of the new year. It is on this date that God sits in judgment over all mankind to decree their fate for the upcoming year. And it is on this date that the Torah decrees that we blow the shofar, so that we will be remembered, so that we will be remembered favorably when we are judged. Furthermore, this date marks the creation of the world and mankind. However, Rosh Hashanah is not the beginning of the year in every context. In some areas of Halakha, the new year indeed begins on the first of Tishrei, but in other areas of Halakha, the new year begins on a different date. For example, the 15th of Shavat, Tu Bishvat, is the new year for trees, which is relevant to the laws of taking Truma and Maiser from the fruit of the trees. Our tractate begins with a list of all the different new years. After dealing with the beginning of the years, the tractate turns its attention to the beginning of the months. The months of the Jewish calendar are based on the cycles of the moon, with each month starting when the moon first becomes visible as a narrow crescent. From biblical through Mishnahic times and even later, the beginning of the month, Rosh Chodesh, was not determined by a fixed calendar. People who saw the first appearance of the moon would go before a based in and tell the judges what they had seen. Based on the witness testimony, the judges would decide whether the day is Rosh Chodesh. About half of this tractate is devoted to this subject. The final two chapters of this tractate deal with the festival of Rosh Hashanah. Specifically, its two special features, the sounding of the shofar and the extended Musaf prayer. The Jewish calendar. To understand the laws of how the based in established Rosh Chodesh, an introduction is required. The secular calendar used in the Western world is based entirely on the solar cycle, meaning that the length of the year equals the time it takes for the Earth to go around the Sun, which is about 365 and one fourth days. However, the year's division into 12 months, of between 28 and 31 days, is not based on any astronomical cycle. There is no natural event that dictates which day should be the first of the month, or even the year, or even that the year should be divided into 12 monthly units rather than 5, 15, or 20. This is not the case with the Jewish calendar, in which the months are based on the lunar cycle, with each month corresponding to one revolution of the moon around the Earth. Twelve of these lunar months make up a year. The lunar cycle. As the moon moves around the Earth, it reaches a point where it is exactly between the Earth and the Sun. That position is known as the conjunction of the moon and the Sun as observed from the Earth. The length of time between such conjunctions is 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes, and 3 and a third seconds. Our sages did not divide the hour into minutes and seconds, but rather into halakim, parts, of which there are 1,080 in an hour. Each chelek equals 3 and one third seconds, or 1 18th of a minute. Thus, the duration of the moon's revolution is 29 days, 12 hours, and 793 halakim, the precise moment of the conjunction at which the moon completes its revolution of the earth to begin a new revolution is called Molad Halevana, birth of the moon, or Molad for short. The time between one Molad and the next is the duration of the month. Phases of the moon. If the moon had its own light, it would always appear to us as full, like the sun or a star. However, the moon has no light of its own. Rather, it reflects the light of the sun. Depending upon the moon's position relative to the sun and the earth, it appears to us in different shapes, ranging from a thin crescent to a full circle. As explained above, the moon at one point in its cycle, of uh, the moon at one point in its cycle, the conjunction or molot, lies between the sun and the earth. When that happens, the side of the moon that is that always faces the earth does not receive any light from the sun with the result that the moon is totally invisible to us. A number of hours later, as it moves out of its position between the sun and the earth, the moon begins to reflect some sunlight towards the earth. A small part of the moon then becomes visible as a very thin crescent. Additional factors. It would seem, based on the above, that the Jewish month should always begin at the moment of the Molad conjunction, and its duration should be a constant 29 days, 12 hours, and 793 halakim. Neither of these conditions, however, is possible. We are commanded to establish Rosh Chodesh based on the sighting of the moon. 
and, as stated earlier, the moon could not be seen at the moment of the molad. Furthermore, months could not begin at constant interviews, intervals of 29-12-793, because the Torah commands that months consist of whole days and not fractions of a day. Thus, a month cannot start or end in the middle of the, of the day. This then prevents our using the movement, the moment of the molad as the start of the month. The Mitzvah of Kiddush HaKodesh The Torah states, This month shall be for you the first of the months. See Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. This verse contains a commandment that the court perform Kiddush HaKodesh, sanctifying the new month. Based on certain factors, the court had to determine which day is Rosh Chodesh and then declare that day to have the sanctity of Rosh Chodesh. This obligation applied to the great Sanhedrin of 71 judges, the highest court in the land. However, any three members of the great Sanhedrin may act on behalf of the full court. They may even appoint non-members to proclaim Rosh Chodesh, provided that these non-members too have the proper ordination. Except under extraordinary circumstances, the mitzvah of sanctifying Rosh Chodesh must be performed in Eretz Yisrael. To make its determination, the based in court of three judges appointed to sanctify Rosh Chodesh, relied on the testimony of people who claimed to have seen the new moon, i.e., the moon's first visible crescent. These people must be eligible witnesses who are fit to give testimony before court. After deciding that the witnesses are eligible and their testimony is reliable, the based in would sanctify the day and declare it to be Rosh Chodesh. The based in also relied on a great deal of other astronomical information, including the timing of the molad, to check whether the witnesses were telling the truth. For example, if the witnesses claimed to have seen the new moon before the molad, or if they described it as being in a position that did not accord with astronomical calculations, their testimony was rejected. If the witnesses testified on the 30th day of the outgoing month, and their testimony was accepted, that day was declared to be Rosh Chodesh. In such a case, the previous month had only 29 days and was called Hasar, deficient, Haser, deficient. Because it had less than the full 29-12-9-793 of the lunar cycle. If witnesses did not testify on the 30th day, the next day would automatically become Rosh Chodesh, without the declaration of the base din. In that case, the previous month contained 30 days and was called Maleh, full, or Me'ubar, pregnant. Because it had more than the 29-12-793 of the lunar cycle. Since Rosh Chodesh could fall on either one of two days, the same doubt existed in regard to any festival that begins on a specific date in that month. Therefore, once the Basin made their decision, they informed the people so that they could celebrate the festivals on the proper dates. People living in distant places who could not be informed in time had to celebrate Yom Tov for two days, since they did not know which of the two days was actually Yom Tov. The Fixed Calendar This method of determining which day is Rosh Chodesh was used until the year 4118 after creation, or 385 of the Common Era. At that time, Jewish communal life in Eretz Yisrael was at risk of collapse due to foreign persecution, and the very institution of the Sanhedrin was in danger. Rabbi Hillel, a 13th generation direct descendant of Hillel the Elder, who was head of the Sanhedrin, established the current Jewish calendar and ended the process of sanctifying Rosh Chodesh based on the sighting of the moon. Using ast astronomical and halachic calculations, he and his court devised the system in use today and sanctified every Rosh Chodesh until the coming of the Messiah, when the sanctification based on sighting will be restored.